Hello, my name is Erdem Topsakal. I'm the uh, Editor-in-Chief of IEEE, Antennas and Propagation Digital Communications. Today, uh, we have a legend with us, Professor Akira Ishimaru. Uh, welcome, Professor Ishimaru. Thank you so much uh, for taking time to interview with us. Yeah, thank you very much for asking me to do this. Great. I would like to start uh, with uh, uh, going back to your early life. Uh, was there a moment which led to uh, you to get into STEM education, specifically in engineering, and uh, to pursue a career in engineering and antennas and propagation? Yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, to start that I was born in Japan, and uh, the in my uh, my high school days, I was very much interested in physics and mathematics. And uh, uh, so that's one of the reasons. And also, I chose uh, electrical engineering because the mathematics and physics are very interesting. But I, I thought that uh, electrical, electrical engineering uh, has more applications, uh, more interesting. But anyway, I had a good time going through the education in Japan. And then actually, uh, I applied uh, the University of Tokyo, uh, and uh, I applied for the uh, Electrical Engineering University of Tokyo, which is kind of hard to get in, actually. And also, uh, I spent some time in the University of Tokyo. And then afterward, after I graduated, <clears throat> uh, I spent some time in the uh, government laboratory. But uh, at the same time, I had an opportunity to uh, apply or uh, ask for I asked to uh, uh, accept the Fulbright scholarship. And uh, that was a suggestion this is right after the war. And uh, there are not, not uh, too many opportunities like that. And there are a huge number of people who wanted to be in this program. I was one of them. And uh, it was about few thousand people applied, and only about two, three hundred passed. And anyway, I I passed the exam, and so I was a uh, scholar. Uh, and then I came to the United States, and the United States, because at that time, uh, to us, to many people in Japan, that's one of the top place, as far as science goes, top place to be, and because the all the progress, all the interesting problem, progress was done in Arizona, was in the United States, and so I was very excited. So anyway. I came to the United States. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. I guess the rest is history, but I would like to talk to you about your research areas as uh, as well. So when you came to the United States, uh, what areas uh, you know did you start working on and uh, uh, what kind of research projects that led to? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, history of uh, you know those events and uh, what kind of uh, interesting uh, engineering topics, physics, topics that uh, you tackled? Yes. Well, when I came to the United States, one of the uh, most interesting thing I get out of this book by uh, uh, Born and Wolf, a huge book, but it's a new, relatively new, anyway, was supposed to be 50 years old, I suppose. But uh, it includes all the optics, but the one that I'm very much interested in is a partial coherence of the 
that are titled partial variance. And uh, I was interested because normally when you talk about uh, optics, uh, I think of uh, coherent optics or incoherent optics. But here we are see opportunity to, to study partial coherence. And I was very much interested in knowing what it is. And so I got very much interested in uh, partial coherence. But then um, afterward, I got more interested in statistical electromagnetics because statistics, statistics is key to the uh, partial coherence. If you want to study partial coherence, you have to know how to do this. And uh, the, the way to do it is uh, uh, the statistical electromagnetic theory. And so I got very much interested in that. And so that's how you get started. Great. So, I mean, uh, connected to that, I would like to talk about your book, uh, the book which is uh, Wave Propagation and Scattering in Random me uh, Media. Uh, got over 10,000 citations so far, and it had a big impact uh, in the field. Uh, so uh, can you talk a little bit about the book, how it started, and uh, the impact of the book, you know, uh, in, in the area? Yeah, yes. The book... I was very much interested in writing a book, actually, and uh, because it, uh, it summarized a lot of things that I was studying, and uh, I was in, and I was of course teaching by that time, and uh, uh, I was very much interested in organizing and teaching, organizing, and so. Well, I enjoyed teaching, and at the same time, I enjoyed writing a book. And uh, the book contains, my book always contains more analytical approach. At the same time, include some of the experiment. And uh, to me, both analytical approach and experimental approach, all those are too important. Uh, element to me, so I enjoyed it. I understand. Uh, yeah, it had a big impact in the fields uh, with so many citations and all that. And uh, many schools actually used your book, you know, to teach some of those uh, higher level, graduate level courses and all that in electromagnetics. So thank you for all these contributions. My next question is about the role of APS uh, in your career. So how are you involved in antennas and propagation society activities? Uh, in, in what year, you know, and, uh, you know, you have been a part of the society for many, many years. So can you, uh, you know, uh, tell us uh, about that journey? Yes, I, APS. APS, actually, I belong to APS long, long time. And uh, at the same time, I, I uh, also worked in the RC organization. And those are the RC and I2P APS. Both are very important to me. In fact, uh, I spent all my life, almost all my life, uh, joining and working with those two organizations. And so I enjoyed it. My APS, particularly, I had a lot, lot of friends, uh, and so I get to know many people, uh, and that's one of the great things about APS. I, I enjoyed it. Basically, friendship and networking, you think that it's extremely important as part of the society? Yes. And great. My next question is about uh, where do you think the field is heading? Uh, you know, uh, uh, you've, you've been retired, I think, for a while now as an emeritus professor. But can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how do you see the field going, uh, antennas and propagation, electromagnetics in general? Yes. Uh, I, I spent all my life uh, 
studying uh, electromagnetic uh, all applications. So, but the recent years, I must I should mention that uh, last uh, uh, several years I got interested in uh, some of the quantum optics, and the reason for that is that uh, actually uh, the electromagnetics and quantum optics are two two it seems to be two separate uh, subjects which the other two separate subjects but then both are based on fundamentally same ideas to me anyway and so I and then I, I noticed that uh, many of the top APS uh, people, expert, are also interested in in quantum. Uh, and so I was very much interested in uh, in knowing both uh, quantum and also classic here. And uh, I, I, uh, I I have been giving papers almost every year at uh, Russi uh, meetings. And uh, most of the papers that I gave are related to the, um, the these days, related to quantum optics as viewed from classic EM. In other words, I like to see what the connection between those two. Why people in top uh, top uh, top AP people are interested in in this uh, uh, in, uh, in this quantum, so and so was interesting because actually fundamentally the quantum and classic EM not quite so separate. If you look at it, basic idea, and also the, there are people who really studied, started this. There are many of them, them expert in AB or the uh, uh, quantum and uh, EM at the same time. And so those are, to me, it's the same in a sense, but how same? What's the difference? I was very much interested in this. So I gave uh, several papers on this. In fact, uh, this coming uh, uh, January, I'm giving a uh, paper on this. And uh, the key point is, how, what is uh, the quantum optics as viewed from classic EM. And by the, 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 the connection, that is very important to me. So I, I, I enjoyed it. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to reading it. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there are many others uh, who would uh, uh, watch this interview. They'll be interested in reading it as well. Uh, uh, you know, great points. My last question about uh, uh, your advice for next generation of engineers and scientists. And also, personally, I want to know uh, what's the secret of a long and happy life? Mm. Well, you know that uh, they quite often... Uh, in my profession, maybe yours too, uh, we get kind of uh, get stuck in uh, one area. Uh, even uh, the uh, uh, mathematics, so and you get into one corner of the important uh, EM theories, which is important. Also, to me, we should look at a little bit broader area and see how uh, other 
For, for example, I've been interested in physics, some of the questions. And uh, I, I, I look at the physics problem and, and the classic uh, electromagnetics. There are so much in common, so much difference, so much in common. And uh, I, so last uh, few years, I spent more time on uh, uh, quantum optics, but at the same time, I, my paper is usually uh, quantum optics as viewed from uh, classic year. I think this is a kind of topic that people might be interested in, but should be interested. I enjoy doing it. Great. So basically, your advice is that uh, don't be stuck in one area, you know, uh, venture into other areas, uh, you know, as you see fit. Yes. Yeah, so. uh, very much so, because the, uh, the EM, classic EM, uh, the Maxwell and so on, you have a great work has been done, very successful. But what are the new areas? Is this the end of the study that we're doing? Or what is it? And so I'm, I'm interested in both uh, classic EM and in fact, I spent all my life doing classic EM and my, all my books. Written, written for classic year. But at the same time, I like to look at beyond the whatever I'm doing and uh, what is new, why it's new, why it's different. Uh, that's very interesting. So I enjoy uh, studying it and uh, so I think that uh, the, the, those basic uh, EM uh, background is very helpful to many people uh, to understand what's going on. Normally, you think that the quantum optics is totally different from uh, Classic EM. Yeah. Well, it's a different, but you, we should look at it. And uh, there are a number of questions. Number some of the questions uh, physics people uh, raise some questions about quantum optics, and uh, I am interested in looking at all these different areas. See if I can understand. I know uh, uh, not only myself, but the EM people maybe might be interested in doing this. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that wraps our uh, interview. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for all these great advice uh, for everybody. And thank you for, uh, you know, explaining us about uh, your interest in uh, quantum optics uh, and how it relates to electromagnetics. And we are all looking forward to reading, uh, you know, uh, uh, your article. Uh, uh, thank you again. So uh, this wraps up our uh, interview with Dr. Uh, Ishimaru. Uh, until next time, stay happy, stay healthy. Thank you.